I am Vijay Kumar and in today's class I am explaining about bulk bind, so an important concept in PLSQL. So, what is bulk bind and what is the importance of bulk bind? Before going to this uh, bulk bind, first look at this program. See, in this program I am updating so the each and every employee salary, incrementing each and every employee salary by 1000. I am updating the salaries, but what I am doing is incrementing each and every employee salary by 1000. So, I am taking a type in this type uh, array type and this type allows table of employee numbers and next I am taking a variable, variable of EMP NO array type. So, what is EMP NO array? This is a collection type and this is a collection. So, next I am getting all the employee numbers from employee table, all the employee numbers are bulk collected and the employee numbers are assigned to this E. Okay. So, when you execute this statement, all employee numbers are bulk collected and employee numbers are assigned to this variable E. Next what I am doing is, I am accessing one by one employee number and updating that employee salary. So, for the first time what is uh, I value is 1, E of 1 that means the first employee number, the first employee number salary is incremented by 1000. Next time I value is what 2, E of 2, the second employee salary incremented by 1000. Next time I value is 2, so third employee number, third employee E of 3, third employee salary incremented by 1000. Like every time this loop runs, so an employee salary is incremented by 1000. Then suppose when you run this program background, uh, two engines works, one is uh, SQL engine and another one PLSQL engine. When you run this program, two engines works, PLSQL engine and SQL engine. So, PLSQL engine handles PL statements and SQL engine handles SQL statements. Okay. That any PL statements are there, they are uh, handled by PLSQL engine and any SQL statements are there, they executed by SQL engine. Suppose in this program, I am using a collection and this collection is handled by PLSQL engine, but this update is executed by SQL engine. Okay. So, collection is handled by PLSQL engine, but update command is executed by SQL engine. Suppose here, every time this for loop runs, one element is passed from PLSQL engine to SQL engine and SQL engine will execute the update command after executing the update command and return the control back to the PLSQL engine. So, every time this loop runs an element is passed, element is passed from PLSQL engine to SQL engine and SQL engine will execute update and returns control back to the PLSQL engine and what is this is called? This is called context switch. If the number of context switches increases, performance degrades. Okay. So, suppose assume you are updating uh, millions of records, then this degrades what performance, so, number of contexts which increases and performance degrades. So, to improve the performance use bulk bind, then let us see how to use bulk bind. Suppose if we use bulk bind, then from PLSQL engine to SQL engine, element is not password, the complete collection is password. Okay. If you use uh, bulk bind. So, from PLSQL engine to SQL engine, so not element, the complete collection is passed from PLSQL engine to SQL engine and SQL engine will execute all the update commands and returns control back to the PLSQL engine. Here the number of contexts which is reduced and performance is improved. But how to use bulk bind? To use bulk bind, what you have to do is use for all loop instead of using for loop. See, if you see this program, in this program I am using for loop. So, instead of using for loop, use for all loop. Okay. Then, so, how to use for all loop? What is the syntax of for all loop is? Then, for all variable in say lower limit dot dot upper limit statement. This is what how to use for all loop. For all variable in lower limit dot dot upper limit statement. And for all loop allows only one statement and that statement must be DML statement. So, it allows only single statement and that statement must be DML statement. Then, so, let us go to this program. So, instead of using for loop, use for all loop. Then, 
same for all so remove this loop and loop because this is not required because this contains only one statement next so after this I am executing the commit statement after executing this I am executing the commit statement and commit is executed and program ends ok. So, what is the advantage of this is this will improve the performance ok. So, how it improve the performance means when you run this program from PL SQL engine to SQL engine only the complete uh, collection is password not element by element the complete collection is password. So, execute the update and returns control back to the PL SQL engine. So, what Oracle recommends is when you are bulk insert bulk updates bulk deletes when you are doing bulk inserts bulk updates bulk deletes. So, better to use for all loop instead of using for loop. So, let me run this program. Now, before running the program see the salaries EMP and was salary from EMP. So, the salary is 800, 1600. So, let me run the program. So, it is E of the spare condition is not required yet semicolon. So, PLS skill procedure successfully completed. Just go and see the salaries select EMP NVO salary from what EMP. So, what is the salaries? Now, if you see this each and every employee salary is incremented by 1000. So, before running the program the salary was 800 now it is incremented by 1000 ok. So, this is the importance of for all loop ok. So, thank you, thank you for watching this video. Mm -hmm.